You know, every time, every time I go to the store, go the mall, especially go to the mall, go clear water, every single time, like without fail. Kids, like, I'm speaking, you look like you could be just at the very beginning stages of university. Some of them look 18, 19, 22. And I'm like, uh, I'm flattered. Are you into e Are you into, what do they call them? Cougars. Is that your taste? Uh, are you following this fast trend of irresponsible women all over the show? Is that what's going on eh? uh, are you into me because it's popular now to be into older women and there was a time when i thought that that's the reason why i i keep on getting hollered at ad what's this uh, when i was at the disc camp today the uh, two of the staff members they who be the see like you know see like say and see they keep on turning off the power there was a power card that made them the, the store dark for like perhaps a minute before lights you know regen the generators uh, switch the light back on again and at the time when the power went cool i was in the in the aisle headed towards the pay point the till and i got stopped dead in my tracks because it literally went pitch black inside the store it was so dark that i could not see my way around but i had seen impending me two uh young staff members but i said this came guys and as we they were coming this way towards me and i was walking towards them about to go to the pay for well i wasn't able to pay everybody knows that now yeah and when the lights went off i was like ah guys can't this is how you kick clients out uh customers out of the store when it's already past a closing time because i went there later on you know how i was staying i was in the car it's a sunday today type thing so the store was basically closed and i was now going and they were walking up i was like oh goodness you guys are mean this is how you kick clients out i was making a joke and these kids were like ah no my sister no this is anc you know this is anc this is a load shedding it's not us we don't do this um but you know got away my sisters and they started to shell a holla because i guess they felt like they could afford to holla at a customer because it's dark now and no managers looking nobody's looking at them and the two of them kept on talking to me on time you look nice you look nice and i was like thanks Thanks. But I remembered what they looked like before the, the lights went off. And I was like, y'all saw me. How in the world are you asking a 38-year-old woman out for Inamba? Now that your inhibitions are loose, it's like the purge. Gumiyama in the store. Send your shela manja butlapa. I'm a customer. Because I'm a customer that does not even look like they could be in high school. Because these people, these kids, they look like kids. Maybe at the latest 19. So maybe we'll go to 16, 17-year-old Nyana in the store. And these guys kept on hollering at me and I thought that maybe it's because you know they're into cougars and what have you you know little boys they have a fascination sometimes with older women but that's not the only event it's not isolated where I have had this kind of attention given me at the mall Gotlia Water in particular from kids from kids and one time when I was at the Standard Bank the dude who sold my ID and I've spoken about this before I gave him my ID to get that bank card that I say rescued the day today when he was helping me with that particular service he was like I can't believe the age on your ID book I I don't mean to be offensive or whatever but you don't look a day over 19 you don't look a day over 19 I was like okay I was expecting you to say maybe 25 19 is a bit of a stretch perhaps your eyes are a little bit oblong I don't know but thank you I, I take it as a compliment I take it as a compliment so what I'm trying in telling these stories I'm not trying to toot my own horn but I'm trying to help you understand what God does for his daughters and what he will preserve if you love him and God Christ is the lover of our souls he is our bridegroom do you understand and a bridegroom takes care of his bride therefore if a man gives his life to Jesus he, when he seeks the Lord's face for a wife he is seeking to basically love her the way that Jesus Christ loved the church and if this is how Jesus loves me if the Lord has preserved me to a point where like because they think especially because I've gained weight I felt like I look especially old because I've got body dysmorphic disorder or whatever but despite my weight gain I got kids hollering at her sister because they think I'm just a chubby like 20 year old as opposed to a skinny one what I used to be before all right if the Lord can preserve me to a point where I am being pursued by boys who would be shocked out of their minds to find out how old I am and so probably stop asking me out how much more than when you wait on the Lord for a husband will that man upon being groomed and trained by the Lord also be in the business of preserving the glory of his wife a good man is preserving to a wife that's what you must understand a, a, a man that loves adores honors his woman even after she has had five kids that woman will still be pursuable by men 
10, maybe even 20 years her junior. The way that I was sprint her mother down the aisle, like a thing, basad. Any guy in the fellow fit on some air system, my sweet tight. Any rando, or figure on general that I line. Niam calm, I'm over cute. Mwaba, ni nama plans together and you can just envisage jugu tabanto nabazo wa hot ganjani. Heba tu, mchua tenga hazibi jeso, oku jisi zeka korobela, ono ntolo na le crush. I spoke about that earlier. He is nothing at all what it is that makes for a faithful man who can find. That's what the scriptures say. You know, with a, a godly woman, the Lord says, uh, uh, what is this? An excellent wife who can find. The contrast to that is a faithful man who can find. Faithful to God. They're rare. Few and far between. Narrow is the road that leads to life and few they be that find it. Broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter into it. So therefore you can trust that a godly husband really truly consecrated to the Lord is also hard to come by. So therefore when you wait on the Lord, you put yourself in a position to be married of to a man that is rare, so rare that the scriptures say of him who can find. And the rarity of this man will make sure that he doesn't go against the girl, uh, go sort of with the grain of the world. Uh, many of the men that have hurt me, including ones who loved me literally quite severely, did so because Nema Mese, Nema Mese, they were listening to group think they were listening to things that put them in group think they were listening to other men like a man cave a man is supposed to leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife and the two become one flesh and they go into the sunset together not first engage in some kind of sowing of their royal oats and then party it up a storm following which he will then grab a wife and this wife will always be battling with him struggling to come home at night and with him wanting to maintain clout and street cred among the boys by disrespecting her or by acting like a little bit of a king kong in her presence not listening to what she has to say because apparently it's wimpy to listen to a woman men who listen to the counsel of other men in society as opposed to their wives are men who are going to aid you gaspit oh fraza and they frown like men who are not refined by god frown upon men who honor and respect with dignity basari bateng banla bateng i have been broken by men who literally listened to a man cave a clump of males speaking rubbish from whatever orifice of their body was evaporating random pathogens at the time and he would take these things and start out alright with me but then because of my message from me to snacks that's how my ex-boyfriend and I ended up breaking up that's how that fiance that I met the dude from the US acted a fool in my grill like men who meet a woman fall head over heels in love starts to tell his boys about this lady and then his boys call him a wimp they call him uh, what is this whipped they call him basically just wearing this woman's bra and panties the way that he's, he's so losing his cool he needs to keep himself in a bunch and so the guy goes from being doting adoring and fabulous over you uh, to you know withholding affection he starts to pull reverse psychology stunts and all these things and so the guy that you met that you went on the first date with and you felt this is it then becomes this suddenly kind of weird aloof his disposition becomes weird and he starts to withhold affection from you because apparently if he floods you if he showers you with it that's gonna destroy his clout with you that you're gonna get used to it and so get arrogant they pamper you and they shower you with adoration and then they take it away and the bible says in um genesis when woman is being judged with man god says to the woman that from now on your that your desire will be for your husband why would that even be a curse if at all the husband would not withhold it from her if at all a man would give his love and affection to a woman she would not grovel after it desire it to a point of even bringing about sin and sin where it is fully grown bring about death so men withhold desire they no desire sorry but affection women desire it they withhold it and so in order to get more and more of it they become monsters but a man that is being trained refined by the holy spirit a man that is being taught that if at all you ignore your wife even your prayers are going to be hindered a man that does not go and grab ephesians is a five or six where it is spoken of the relationship between husbands and wives and how that ought work but doesn't like butcher it out of context and uses it as a megalomaniac to bash with some kind of an iron fist the wife's rights in the union once in because apparently a woman is supposed to be silent grabbing scripture violently out of context no hermeneutical neither exegetical um responsible division of the word of truth just a ransacking ransacking disregarding stories in the bible of valiant women that changed men's minds deborah was one abigail made a king not commit genocide but these men don't quite see things in that way they also don't recognize the importance of a grand godly woman in their lives versus a bad one because a bad one can cause a man to lose the strength that he has his name is samson he gets his eyes gouged out because he fell for a harlot 
So there is a massive, massive impact that a woman can make in a man's life if at all this man is godly or even ungodly. And a woman has got transformative power. The Lord made woman for man. The Lord made man and woman to be with one another because it is not good for man to be alone. And so a man that thinks that he can operate in isolation in the way that he makes decisions in life is a man that disregards the importance of this person built from the rib you know and so he just becomes a megalomaniac instead of a partner in the things of god when then you don't partner with your wife in order to have dominion over the earth together as basically a true power couple that's what a power couple really in the sense of the word is it's a couple in christ when they disregard their roles respectively in the grander scheme of things we get a butch woman that's upset that the man is not going to do what it is that she wants him to do and we also get uh, a man that is kind of megalomaniacal on some but i'm the boss here and you don't get to speak so there is war clamor between the 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 genders and what that results in is irabish frankly that we are seeing actually in the streets ngonandi pano tabopesta where two people who are completely out of god's will where the woman is not godly enough to pull a man into sense sense right like an abigail making sure that david does not commit genocide and a man who has not given his life over to the lord so he does not know how to head her lead her in a way that's going to stay her hand from being a jezebel from being this random just absolutely out of her place woman that thinks that she can run the show like what kind of a woman that organizes an escape of a fugitive out of prison on fire that has completely left her estate as a woman because we are supposed to be fragile gentle frankly more moral than men we are their regulator we are this thing that is a homeostasis in men we calm them down when he wants to be beastly and drive a knife into the heart of a man a woman can make a man not do that she is the still quiet lake while he is a raging sea and the two of them when they come together they create a homeostatic balance and if a woman is not bringing a man to morality if a woman is not staying a man's hands down if a man if a woman does not cause a man to down tools from like i said committing genocide then a woman is not a woman she is some weird morphed orbed structure that has far departed from her first estate so manje ni ahlukunyezwa ngamadoda angazazi grand shop and amadoda khona futhi bafila entitled ukuhlukumeza abafazi bakhona ngoba abazazi abazibon so they grab Ephesians 6 completely is it is 6 or 5 out of context respect me only a rapist and a murderer all go tanyana and that's one thing definitely like lo submit to that nonsense eh batung christ is above man man then is above woman but if man is not godly then woman goes directly to Christ and that's what I've done I've disregarded this layer that's man because it is currently a very unholy I give out to what's offered on like in Monam 38 literally things could fall apart any minute now for me I don't know I no longer have the collagen of my 20s I no longer have got the healthy womb of my 20s so I can't afford to just let any random fool come and fertilize my eggs I cannot be with a man that's going to strip away the last remaining uh, like you know ounce of glory I have I am literally on, on thin ice I'm, I'm on a thread I, I once listened to this misogynistic man comment about women over the, th- the age of 35. He was like, they're like a beautiful car from long ago. Like an old uh, vintage model of a vehicle. It's glorious, it's beautiful, but my goodness, it's falling apart. Yeah, that's what he said about women over the age of 35. So if men in the world look at women that way, they look at them over the age of 35 as these vintage vehicles that are still being very beautiful. They're falling apart and you have to keep on servicing it all the time. If I end up married to a man with a mindset like that, I understand that Vele Vele just like a vintage vehicle that needs to constantly have its car carburetor changed out its engine looked at and like oil being changed every two weeks i am also going to need to have stuff changed every two weeks i'm going to become one of those women obsessed with plastic surgery not letting myself age and just feel because that's what happens like seriously let your skin set because it's what happens you're going to get an incorruptible body later on a man that is wicked is going to make you so insecure that also not only business working at the lip filler the collagen injection the only business or whether the breast augmentation the ing 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 come on just like come on let your teenage daughter be the only one that looks like a teenager in the house it's okay it's okay Okay. Really, you've had your time. You've shone. Mara, Mona, Osa is in Jesu. Oh, who is under the knife more times than you can appreciate? Understand that. Lonens and Libizle cried, eh? In Jay, what do they call this? Implants. Lonens and Libizle died the gray hair saloon. Lonens and the busy guys, eh? Can I cut for a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot? Because women who leave themselves to age gracefully with time, they look glorious. Just leave it be. 
Have you seen what, 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 like, what do you call this thing? Freaks of nature. Some of these elderly celebrities look like freaks of nature. If they had just left themselves alone, they would be so glorious in their elderly years. And yet, they're the new rapper that came on the scene yesterday. They are still trying to look like Doja Cat at the age of 90. What in the world? No, stop. Like, stop. So if you don't want to have the level of insecurity that's going to cause you to destroy the glory of God in your face, in your body, um, when you are older, some of y'all looked at your mothers that have never been under them. Like they're so pretty. They're, they're pretty older ladies. If you want to be a pretty older lady, you know, like everybody knows, everybody ages, but people still think you're, hair, you're, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful, you're pretty. Honey, you will leave a bad man alone. You will leave a bad man alone. The thrive and the thrill of this relationship only comes in the early years when all of y'all still got your collagen on fire and on fleek. And oh, another thing about men, they age better than women. So, Musa, do it when the two of y'all are in your 60s and therefore diss you and mock you for it you will leave these bad men alone they look better than us at older ages they look better with gray hair they look good when they are all ripped muscular but old and aged they are attractive in their older years especially when they take care of their bodies men age gracefully so if you don't want to be mocked and teased and feel insecure in the presence of an ungodly man, you will repent. A godly man is preserving. He is embalming of a woman's beauty and glory. You will still look like a bag of chips and all that at 50, at 60, because you married the right guy. Like literally, can I live at and I'm insecure as it is just because of my chronological age and how people look down on women once they get to a certain age. I kiss on Yale, I kiss on Bilibana, and I'm freaking out and I'm panicking. But when I go to the mall, I get asked out by 20 year olds. That tells me that I have a heavenly husband who has preserved me, made me look gorgeous as I get older. And I will still look like this for many more years to come. And I'm not about to go and settle for anyone other than who it is that he has approved to continue loving me as he loved me. No man, of course, can love me the way that Christ loved the church. That's impossible. But one who is striving for it, I'll take that. And currently, I've yet to meet a man that's actually striving to add a minimum, please God. Like, guys, just add a minimum. Not so much please me, but God. That when he looks at me, he thinks, hey, what would Jesus do if I did this to Karabo? Because, I mean, clearly, she is the apple of his eye. If I were to pull one hair out of place on her head, I'm going to have some issues. A man that can fear God enough to basically tread lightly around me. I'll take it. He won't be perfect in loving me, of course, because he's fallen. He's a human being, as I will also struggle to love him perfectly. But the fact that it will be my fear for God that will keep me honoring of my husband instead of so much my desire to please him, that's what's going to keep me in a bunch. The fact that God loves him so much that he would have some real issues if I went out of line in my role and my disposition as a woman for him. It is about the fear of God. When you look at God first, you then don't let your get taken by a tabo pesta handsome in his how old is he late 20s early 30s when the man is still looking really great but what are you gonna do with a tabo pesta a little bit of a criminal also again at 60 oh yeah no not 60 you see when you get older that's when character starts to matter so what are you gonna do with a fugitive unandipa no tabo if at all they were to get away with this matter that they are currently uh, committing if they were to get away with this thing that they did what would they do when they turn 50 each when none of them have their former glory anymore now you're just two criminals that aren't even that hot anymore and there's no character so all over the show and since men age better than women you can trust that Utabo would since he is of course a sexual pervert then cheat on Unandipa um fazi um sise uguta abalege his own country thank god they got busted thank god they got busted for the sake of Unandipa she might have a couple of years in prison and get out and she did not participate in that murder but Upesa has gone forever Mara uh, not before reputation let's move to the next part